About good morning and welcome to today's, today's meeting. I'm Councillor Julie Grace, Chair of Elections and Democratic Structures Committee. Before we start the formal business on the agenda, I would like to welcome... Oh, it's not here, is he either? No, nobody. <laughs> right. Right, before we commence, I would like to outline the domestic arrangements for the meeting. We are not expecting a fire practice today. If the alarm sounds, please leave the building by the way of the fire exit through the doors at the rear of the chamber. When you have left the chamber, proceed down the stairway and exit through the emergency exit on the ground floor. If there is anybody with mobility issues, please wait in the refuge area at the top of the stairs where the emergency evacuation lift is located and use the intercom situated on the left-hand side of the lift doors to call for assistance. The designated assembly point is the public square in front of CAST beyond the fountain. Today's meeting will be audio and vis visually recorded. By entering the council chamber, you accept that you will be recorded and your images retained and broadcast by the council on its website and on YouTube. If you... If anybody intends to record or film any part of today's meeting, please ensure this does not disturb the conduct of the meeting and you only focus on recording those people participating. Okay, thanks. Right, um, item one on the agenda, apologies. I've got, right, I've got Andy Pickering, uh, Councillor Andy Pickering and Councillor Barry Johnson. Item two, to consider the extent to which the press and public are excluded. There are no exemptions items on the agenda today. Item three, declarations of interest, if any. Does anybody want, wish to declare an interest? Right. And any items on the business agenda? So if so, the form will be needed to be completed following the meeting, and please contact Amber or this issue in the process. Right. Item four, minutes of the meeting held on 7th of February 23. Right. Have we all checked the minutes? Yeah. Can we accept those as a true, accurate record? Thank you. Right. Item five, elections update. So, is that the old con cannon then? Thank you, Chair. Um, Trina, our elections manager, is ill, so uh, you have myself this morning and um, Joanne from our elections office who can uh, no doubt ask, answer any uh, technical questions you or your colleagues may have. Um, so firstly, yes, we have the elections update report. Um, there are two main items in this, a, a general update and then an update on the Orkley neighbourhood planning referendum. Um, if I may, I'll just summarise the contents of the report. So in terms of the general update, um, the photo ID measures are now in force from the 4th of May. Uh, you'll be aware that that requires voters to provide ID or obtain a voter authority certificate from the elections office if they wish to vote. Um, despite no elections being held in Doncaster this year, uh, we still have received, uh, at the date of this report, 406 applications for those certificates. So quite a large number in the in the context of, of no elections. Um, as, um, as you may be aware, local elections and parish elections have been held in Sheffield in May, and um, colleagues in the elections office did attend um, for that election to, um, to gain any, any learning from, from that process. Um, it's fair to say, I'm told by the um, elections manager that uh, in terms of voter ID, um, it went really smoothly, uh, not as bad as people had feared. Um, there weren't any particular delays or, or, or sort of blockages to people voting. So that's uh, that's quite a positive uh, feedback and, and sort of lessons learned really from uh, from that process. Uh, the electoral commission have provided a report on their key findings from the May's elections, and uh, you'll see that summarised in the report at, at the bottom of pages seven and uh, into page eight. Um, there are some um, further changes uh, that are brought in by legislation. So there will be, um, uh, there's a requirement to, uh, on the electoral office to uh, support um, polling stations for people with a wide range of disabilities. There's a general responsibility on returning officers to consider the needs of disabled people. 
and provide equipment to support them to vote. And the other main change is that uh, there's the first past the post voting system now for police and crime commissioner uh, elections after the 4th of May this year. There are some further changes expected in October uh, relating to postal and proxy voting arrangements and the delivery of an online application service for absent voters. Uh, more will be known following a, a ministerial statement and some draft um, statutory instruments which will be published and that will be reported to this committee in due course. Uh, in terms of the uh, Orkley neighbourhood planning referendum that was held on the 20th of April this year. There was an electorate of 3,624. There were 1,007 postal votes issued and 332 of those postal votes were returned. On polling day there were 119 votes cast which is a turnout of 4.55%. So overall, with the votes cast on the day and the postal votes, there was a total turnout of 12.44%. And the outcome was in favour of the neighbourhood plan. There were 405 yes votes and 46 no votes. So that's a summary of the report, Chair. I don't know if you or your colleagues have any questions. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. Is there any questions? Thanks, Chairman. Councillor. Hi. No problem. Um, just hearing back the feedback from Sheffield um, and saying they've said it's, in their words, like runs a bit smoothly. I just wonder what steps do they take before the election to make sure that residents like are signed up to uh, need their voter ID? It was a national campaign. Um, so every, uh, they followed the, the EC's post it notes where it's on, all on the bus stops and um, in their social media outlets and things like that, which is what we would would, would do with the same happened obviously here. Did they do anything like locally to make awareness? Because um, it will be a question I'll be asking later on about when we do the uh, local update about the regular canvas. I read, are they, did they do anything with residents to say, like, remind them, like, local campaign? Because it's easy to be blinded by national campaigns. I'm not aware of anything there. Well, I'll, I can find out for you because obviously we only went there on s snippets of days. So we weren't there during the build up to the election day. We were on there for a certain amount of time. So, but I can find that out for you and we'll come back to you and let you know what, what they did locally. Thank you. Yeah, I think it'd be good practice just to see what's worked for them and what we can do in the future for us when we've got local elections. Thank you. Councillor Church. Uh, do you feel that you've got the resources to, uh, to deal with this issue going forward? Um, we'll we'll have to look at what we've got and what resources are out there for us to, to sort of to gain. You know, we will need the support. We have already been offered from other authorities. Obviously, we went to help them. They've come. They've offered to come and help us. Um, but obviously, we're a small team. We'll have to, we'll look the council wide. We'll obviously assist. We've got the comms teams and things like that to help do all the communications that we'll need further in further down the line. Um, but. Obviously, we're learning lessons from what Sheffield have got, putting our own plans in place ready for our elections next year. Um, it's just a case of collating everything now and seeing all the reports, because we're waiting for the reports from the EC, which, which has just come through our own electoral, um, the Association of Electoral Administrators, they've got a report out. Um, so we've, we're going to collate everything together and then come up with, you know, his own uh, plans in, and put those in place ready for a for our next elections, which obviously is next year in, in, the, in the May. Thank you. Councillor Cobby. Um, just moving away from photo ID, uh, we talked about polling stations. Do you have an update on which polling stations may be moved or added to fit the disability requirements? Do we know? Not as yet, no. With the, obviously, we've got a polling station. The polling district and polling place review kicks off in October. We will start to review them again. We have to legally within five years do that anyway. Um, so that will start then. We're already collating information from our previous elections um, to make sure that we've got an, an indication of what is out there already and what we might have to look at changing for future. Because obviously we currently use two portable units and the space that's required for voter ID might not actually be able to do that. And the extra needs for the accessibility will be the same 
instances. So we will have to review all the polling stations, but the consultation will start in October um, for that. So if I can just add to that, I did speak to the elections manager yesterday. Um, she feels we're in a, a good place in terms of that in Doncaster compared to others. For instance, Sheffield, um, as Joanne said, we only have two portable units at the moment in Doncaster, whereas other authorities have, have many more than that. Um, we are starting a, a process in October, we're starting to consult with all sorts of different groups that represent different people with different disabilities to, to get their feedback to sort of feed into into that process. But I think um, definitely speaking to the elections manager, she feels we're in a, a, a very good starting point from that point of view. No, thank you. And I think maybe if we're to consult with those groups, we'll maybe talk about voter ID at the same time to make sure they're prepared and that it will be made that required. Councillor Church. Do you know roughly what the turnout was in Sheffield? What was the, the turnout for? Because obviously it's a bit of a snapshot in council elections, isn't it? What we because I'm quite worried when we get to general elections, the issue could be a little more difficult for us. Sorry, I, I don't know what the turnout was in, in Sheffield. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, we might be able to find all out online, but we can certainly get you a, a written answer to that after. Is that everybody's on? Yeah. Did the members note the report? Thank you. Right, do you want to go ahead with the canvas update then? Thanks, Neil. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so this uh, this report sets out the key work streams uh, that need to be undertaken by election service for uh, the annual canvas. So as you may be aware, each year, uh, each electoral registration office has to undertake a review of the electoral register, so it's uh, uh, complete and accurate, so that's known as the annual canvas. So the revised register has to be published by the 1st of December. Uh, since some reforms in 2020, um, only where all electors cannot be matched from national or local data are households required to respond. So there, there are essentially three routes uh, to carrying out this um, review that's set out in the report. Re route one is to match properties against local and uh, national data sets. And so far in Doncaster, um, we've managed to, to match against 85% um, of electors and 75% of properties successfully. So we continue to match against local data sets um, in terms of Route 1 and all those people who are matched under Route 1 will shortly be written to to confirm uh, that they only need to respond if changes are uh, required. The other two routes set out um, in terms of Route 2, that's a, a data that indicates there may be a change and then Route 3 refers to, uh, to care homes and houses in multiple occupation. So we're well underway um, in terms of starting the process. Um, everything's sort of under control in that regard. So, again, if anybody has any questions, we'll take them. Thank you. Any questions? Councillor Hutchinson. Thank you, Chair. Um, just on the electoral register, does it get updated through people ringing in saying they've moved property and they're now living in this like address rather than the old one? Because I know on the one for my ward, there's people who I know are on an address who don't live there. So is it because they aren't updated? Yeah, the, the way the register works is it's a, an individual. So they, if they move, they need to let us know that they've moved in another address. We do have a number of electors that are, have, have notified us as a new address but not told us that they've lived at an old one. Normally when anybody rings us up, we will ask them if they've moved within the area or you know their previous address. But if they've gone online, which is the government website, they don't always... It's, it's, it's part of the process, but some people will not necessarily put their previous address in, so they will be registered twice. That's what the canvas is doing now, where we're going through all of those people that didn't match, making sure that they're um, at, the, at the right address and removing them from the, the address that they're no longer at. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Right, do members not the report? Right, that concludes the business at today's meeting. I would like to thank you all for attendance and I declare the meeting closed. Thank you.